Coming to our second example. In this example, we will attempt to find the angular velocity of a rigid body using the 313 Euler angle sequence that we discussed in lecture 6. I forget it's A or B. So here's the problem. So we have a rigid body whose body fixed coordinate system is located at any time t by the 313 Euler angle sequence. This Euler angle sequence leads to this kind of a flow chart which I will briefly recall through the figure that I have on the right. The various rotation tensors involved in the Euler angle sequence are given over here. So R phi is a rotation of the ground frame this this E0 is our you know and I can write it down over here this it's in black so let's write it in black so E0 is your ground frame you can sometimes call it the fixed frame whatever it's the observer frame okay it may or may not be fixed we can take it to be fixed for this example so r phi is rotate uh, rotates e0 which is this black coordinate system about e3 by the angle phi to obtain the intermediate coordinate system given by e1 prime e2 prime and e3 prime that's what i called e prime the intermediate coordinate system, the pink coordinate system is then rotated by r theta and r theta is a rotation about E1 prime by the amount theta and it gives me the second intermediate coordinate frame, coordinate system E double prime which is a red frame, this one, this one and the final rotation is by the angle psi which take which which happens about e3 double prime the third axis of the intermediate coordinate frame e double prime and that gives me the blue coordinate system which is the body fixed coordinate system of the rigid body i am following so let's write that down that e is the bfcs of the rigid body okay so that's just to recollect the 313 Euler angle sequence okay you can look it up in lecture 6 so what do we want to do what we want to do is we want to find the rigid body's angular velocity as measured in the ground coordinate system E0 okay and you will express the answer in terms of the basis vectors of the ground coordinate system capital E1, capital E2 and capital E3. So let's go ahead and solve it. The first method of solution follows more or less the same procedure as we did in the previous example where we found 2D rotation to be a part of 3D rotation in that we simply find out the rotation tensor which links the BFCS right let me note it here this is the BFCS which links the BFCS to the ground frame and this rotation tensor can be easily shown to be the multiplication of R psi, R theta and R phi. First R phi takes E0 to E prime, then R theta takes E prime to E double prime and then R psi takes E double prime to E and this is what we saw when we did 313 Euler angle sequences. Once we have the rotation tensor linking the ground frame to the BFCS, we can simply compute the angular velocity tensor by the usual formula of R dot dot R transpose and then we can go ahead and find out the angular velocity vector to be the axial vector of capital omega and this process I invite you to do, uh, it is very good practice. Uh, it may however be uh, involve more algebra than is required. So let me instead go ahead and give you a shorter way. The second method of solution uses the ideas of relative angular velocity that we mentioned earlier. We said that the angular velocity is a vector and therefore it can be added and subtracted like vectors. 
and therefore if we have one rigid one observer observing another rigid body who is observing another rigid body then we can simply add the relative velocities to get the total velocity let me kind of clarify in the context of this example so we are after the angular velocity of the blue frame the body fixed coordinate system with respect to the fixed frame or the observer frame capital given by capital ei that's this clearly the angular velocity can be split into sum of three angular velocities the angular velocity of the blue frame with respect to the black frame is the sum of the relative angular velocity of the blue frame with respect to the red frame which is omega e with respect to e double prime plus the relative angular velocity of the red frame with respect to the pink frame which is omega of e double prime with respect to e prime plus the relative angular velocity of the pink frame with respect to the black frame which is omega of e with respect to e0 so that's clear because we can add and subtract angular velocities each one of these rotations is simple okay so for example what is the rate of rotation or the angular velocity of the blue frame with respect to the red frame well look at how look at how we obtained the blue frame from the red frame we obtained the blue frame from the red frame by rotating about e3 double prime by the rate by the angle psi which itself is a function of time so therefore the rate of rotation of the blue frame with respect to the red frame will be psi dot along e3 double prime so that's just what it is over here so this is that similarly the rate of rotation or the angular velocity of the red frame with respect to the blue of with respect to the pink frame omega of e with respect to e double prime with respect to e prime will be theta dot along e1 prime which is what i have over here so the second one the final one is the rate of rotation of the pink frame with respect to the black frame well with respect to the black frame the pink frame is rotating about capital e3 at the rate at, by the angle phi as a function of time therefore omega of e prime with respect to e0 will be phi dot of capital e3 which is what i have written over here so i mean in a sense we have our answer we are done what's the problem the problem is that this vector is a mixed vector some of its components are in the red frame in the e double prime frame some of them are in the pink frame in the e prime frame and some are in the ground frame we want the answer completely in the ground frame completely in terms of capital ei so how do we do that so this is what we need we need the angular velocity of the blue frame with respect to the observer frame e0 in the e0 coordinate system that means we have to evaluate this expression in the e0 frame which is what i have done over here i have evaluated e3 double prime in e0 e1 prime in e0 and e3 in e0 this one is simple clearly e3 in e0 is simply 0 0 1 however we don't know what or rather it is not clear what these other quantities are and that is what we need to now compute once we have them we have our answer from the flow chart of the 313 euler angle sequence we can immediately write, relate e3 double prime to capital e3 through these two rotation tensors 
this is where e3 double prime is to obtain this from cap from capital i we first rotate by r phi which is this then we rotate by r theta which is this so that's e3 double prime in terms of capital e3 similarly e1 prime is simply obtained by rotating the black frame to get the pink frame recall this that's it so therefore e1 prime is simply r phi dot e3 and from this from these uh, tens these kind of vector equations we can immediately compute that e3 double prime evaluated in e0 will be this multiplication of tensors and vectors notice how r theta which was in the beginning is now in the middle and we have done this now at least two times once in the previous lecture and once in the tutorial let me quickly write it over here so e3 double prime is r theta dot r phi dot e3 so i can evaluate both sides in e0 and i will get back the obvious equation which is this now in this equation i know this and i know this but i don't know this the i don't know r theta in e0 that is because r theta relates e prime and e double prime and has no connection with e0 so i need to evaluate this quantity for this we had said that we will use so to get r theta in e0 we had used we use change of coordinates formula right and i said in tutorial so you can you know refer problem 5 in tutorial 4 when you do that what happens is the order of multiplication over here flips what we need is to relate r theta to a matrix which we know which matrix do we know we know r theta in either the pink frame or the red frame we know r theta in the coordinate systems it connects so we know r theta in e prime and we also know it will be equal to r theta in e double prime okay so this is what we need to do and what we said is that by change of coordinates we can write down that e goes to e0 goes to e prime through this tensor r phi so therefore r theta in e0 will be related to r theta in e prime by r phi and r phi transpose where r phi is evaluated also in e prime and when you substitute this in there you will immediately see that these two cancel off again because r phi relates e0 and e prime therefore r phi in e prime is the same as r phi in e0 okay so let's write that down that because so this implies that r phi in e0 is same as r phi in e prime so when you combine these two equations you will get back precisely this equation the order r theta r phi will flip and r theta will be evaluated in a coordinate system in which it is easily known the other equation e1 prime 
is related to this should be e1 it should not be e3 should be e1 so this other equation is more easily evaluated because r phi is already known in e0 when i say known what i am saying is that r phi in e0 let's look at the picture again r phi in e0 is a 2d rotation so we know its matrix similarly r theta in e prime which is the rotation of the red coordinate system with respect to the pink coordinate system is also a 2d rotation because it's a rotation by angle theta about e1 prime so these two matrices are easily known therefore we can compute e3 double prime in e0 we can compute e1 prime in e0 and that should also be 1 okay and we have solved our problem the angular velocity is given in terms of this very simple vector and each one of these components of this mixed vector can be evaluated in terms of the ground frame uh, unit vectors through these formulae in which these rotation tensors are simple 2d rotation matrices thus we have now found the angular velocity of a rigid body whose body fixed coordinate system is followed through a euler angle sequence specifically the 313 euler angle sequence